Chicago. They beat the Spurs tonight. I give them so much credit for a team. The Spurs have been good this year. Very some downfalls, but when you look at the Clippers, this team is eight and two. They're a five and one division conference. This team is good. This team is our role. Chris Paul, Blake Griffin. I think this team will do well this year. I I, I think they're gonna be first. In the Pacific Division, this, this team is just too good to stop. You know, you look at this Clippers roster, and finally they're a very deep team. They have a great bench right now, uh, really led by great outputs right now from Jamal Crawford. Um, out West, it's going to be a battle between the Lakers, Clippers, and a bunch of other teams. We're not focusing on that today. Uh do you think the Lakers and Clippers, at least one of them will take, uh, one of them will take the top spot in the West? Yes, and you know with the Warriors in the middle between these two teams, I just don't see the Warriors doing it. I am a huge Warriors fan, and you know this Warriors team is still in the motion of getting better. But when you go to the Lakers and the Clippers, these are two teams that have talented players, players that are good enough to make this. Both of these teams in contention for the West. And right now, I can say I don't know which team is going to make it. It's going to be really interesting when these two match against each other. <laughs> now, speaking of Golden State, uh, you're a Golden State fan, and I actually do like this team this year. I think they could be fairly decent. Where Do you, do you see this team as a playoff team? This year, well, I see them having a winning record, and I maybe. I mean, I see this team as a maybe. Right now, but they do have young talent with Clay Thompson being in his second year. And this guy played well last season for the second half with uh, Monte Ellis getting traded as well as the guy Andrew Rugger, but he was hurt. And this team, this bench has been good, but now Brandon Rush is gone with that season ending injury, which was just, that was just awful. Play awful that he got hurt. This guy was supposed to be the best six man for us, but. I think with Jared Jack, Carl Landry, this team's going to be good this year. Especially with Harrison Barnes. This guy's a rookie, but this guy's playing like he's been in the NBA for a while. Stephen Curry off the ankle injury. And I know it was a little scary in the preseason, but I think Stephen Curry's going to be good. Andrew Rowley's had some ankle problems, and he's missed a couple. He's missed some games. I think he's only missed one or two, I believe. But. I think he's going to be a good center this year for the Warriors, and this is what we really need. Nia Jones has just been playing awful. This guy seriously needs to get back on track. If he really wants to stay on this team, I think once his contract is up, he's going to be gone and off the team. And when you look at David Lee, David Lee has carried this team so much, and not enough people give enough credit for how much this guy has done for this team. <laughs> okay, now let's take a look at the other team. Up north in California, uh, the Sacramento Kings are not exactly the best team in the NBA right now at two and eight. Can you tell me what what happened to Tyreek Evans? Well, okay. Well, there's he was rookie of the year. He was a really good rookie. He has had some good years, and then you know I think some rookies kind of get in the motion where they have a really bad season because. Curry, well, you, you look at Curry, and he's, he's been good, but the thing is, he's been injury prone, and I think that's why the Warriors have been good, but with the change, they're just, they seriously need to get every, they just need to get all aspects back on the floor, especially, it's just, Tyree Evans just hasn't done what he's been doing his last, his last season, and I think the Kings, the Kings, this is the guy that you want to go to every game, this is the guy that will give you shots, this guy will give you points. And you don't even get your rebounds sometimes, even assists. I think Tyreek Evans really needs to get back on track. This guy really needs to get just needs to get more points on the board. He shouldn't be struggling right now. The rest of it, I mean, the market Cousins is a really good player for the, the Kings, but when you look at Tyreek Evans, he hasn't done anything so far. Yeah, it's kind of a perplexing situation. You know, Evans was supposed to be a great player. One of the main problems, I think, with this Kings team, Tyreek Evans is leading the team right now in assists per game with 3.1 assists per game. That is pathetic. It's really bad. And the leading person in 
player efficiency rating, uh, the John Hollinger rating on this team is actually Jimmer Fredette. And this was a guy who was kind of ridden off as a player who wasn't going to be great after his rookie season. Uh, what do you think of what you've seen from Jimmer? What I've seen from Jimmer is just, uh, I, mean, you have, I mean, it's just, I haven't seen a lot. I've seen a little bit where you improve. Like this, I, I mean, like, Jimmer just needs to get back on track. This guy seriously needs to help out his team. His team is doing awful. They're the worst team in this specific division. I mean, I was so pissed off with the King. This King team has been just been bad just pretty much for years. And I, you know, the Warriors have been, you know, I, I, the Lakers have came out top of them every year, if you had to say. The Clippers are not coming out of nowhere. And finally, I think we're going to have some tension this year in the Pacific Division in the Western Conference. I see the Warriors coming out of the playoff team. I see the Lakers. And I see it. I see the Clippers as well becoming all playoff teams. Yeah, you've made some great points on the NBA. Now, quickly before I wrap up the show, just because I was so visibly shocked at what happened tonight in San, uh, at the events that took place with the San Francisco 49ers today against the Bears. What the heck were the Bears doing? I mean, you're a San Francisco fan, so you must have been excited, but what in the world was up with the Bears' offense? Jason Campbell cannot be that bad. Okay, you, you don't blame Jason Campbell. You blame your O line. Their O line was just dis, disgraceful. The NFL. They could not block the QB. That four tanks didn't get anything going. And they literally had the worst yards I've ever seen on an offense. They had 20, I think they almost had like 20 to 30 yards in the first half. The offense. Are you kidding me? You have to be really. I mean, Jay Cutler is your main QB for this team. If Jay Cutler's out there, they're going to do horrible. 20 0 at halftime. And when you look at Colin Kaepernick, a rookie, I mean, I know this rookie versus rookie. So these, these are good. I thought this was going to be good defensive matchups, and I guess I was proved wrong because the running game was looking well as well as the passing game for the Niners tonight. And, I, and, the, and the game, I would have to say, play of the game would have to be Colin Kaepernick. This guy proved himself tonight. And I think if um, I think they should try to sit Alex Smith because this guy is doing so good, and he'll be he'll be our future QB, no doubt, for this 49ers team. Yeah, Colin Kaeper Kaepernick tonight looked really, really good. I was very surprised coming out of college. I did not see him as a future starting NFL quarterback, but after watching tonight and him tear to shreds this great Bears defense, uh, he looks like a really great player. Now the San Francisco 49ers team. Has had a great season, and do you think they're they're gonna win? Uh, sorry, they are the top Super Bowl contender in the NFC as of right now. Oh, you're giving me this question. Um, I mean, they they had a close game. I mean, tying with the Rams wasn't very fun. <laughs> I mean, that was a team that the Niners should have beat, and. The Rams probably should have won that game, but, I mean, counting out that game, they've had three close games with the two losses. I mean, if you had to say, I think they're not the top of the, I mean, it's, I mean, it's going to be in contention this year. I mean, with the Saints not having a good season and the Giants not playing as well this year, I see, I see them as a top contender this year. I mean, their defense did, just did fantastic tonight. I mean, they saw Brandon Marshall. Brandon Marshall was pissed at one point during that game. He was just pissed that uh, they got so much coverage on him. That he's your go-to guy as well as, as, well as Hester tonight. So, I mean, I think, I think they're one of the top contenders for the NFC. Well, you know, Robert, always when you're on my show, you make absolutely great points, and it's been so great to have you today. And I'm going to wrap up this show shortly after I hang up with you. But any last words? I like to say go Niners, and I'm um, hoping for some good teams for the Warriors, Stanford Cardinals. Way to beat Oregon. Way to beat Oregon because that was an intense game. I mean, that was I had overtime. I literally was going to scream. Well, thanks, Robert, for being on my show. Uh, no problem, Sam. And that's going to be a wrap for this show.
This has been an absolutely spectacular show. Like I said, I've said many times to my very special viewers, this show is the best show in the entire world. Please watch Sam's Situation. I'm going to be on probably three to four other times during this break so I can get all the latest coverage to you, all the latest sporting events, all the latest happenings in the sports world to you viewers this week. And you know what this has been? This has been Sam Rosen making history one step at a time.